Hello, welcome to this Revit railing lesson. Um, so I'm just going to quickly go through this um, four slide presentation. Um, it's important to note the, the various parts of a railing um, before modeling it. So if you know where all the parts fit and all the families that go into it, um, it should be easy, pretty easy to put them together. Okay, railings do come with quite a, a few components, so it could be confusing, a little confusing, but I mean, once you know where everything is, it's, you know, pretty easy to understand. All right, so let's go through it. Okay, so just made this diagram. Um, this is the railing we'll be creating in this um, tutorial. Um, so the railings are made up of, you know, the following components as I've shown. As you can see over here, we've got a baluster. And the balusters are the vertical members of the railing. Um, they're usually created, they are created as um, families, um, 3D um, families, and they're then brought into the Revit project to be um, hosted in a rail system. And you also have terminations. So the terminations are basically the end members. If you wanted to create, it a, create an end cap for a rail or a handrail, um, you can create terminations. Um, so it's usually good for ending off rails against a wall. Um, yeah. Yeah, so basically end the rails off. Even not even if you don't want to end off the rail um, against the wall, you can maybe create a round end cap to just close it off as well. Yeah, So that is also possible. Then we've got the start and end posts, um, which are the ones at the end. They, sh they are also balusters, but they in the railing system, they hold the end posts over there. And you have corner posts, which are for corners over over there and you've also got the top rail and you've got the intermediate rails which are over here so excuse me intermediate rails and you've got handrails so y as you can see there are three types of handrails okay so on the next page I'll just 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 describes that the rails are the horizontal members as you can see in the previous image they are horizontal members of the rail system and they are created through 2d profiles um, they never brought into the project as three dimension um, three dimensional objects I mean if you're going to use the rail system if the rail railing is going to be made out of the Revit rail system and not a family it will have to be a 2d profile Okay, and the diagrams here at the bottom are just um, diagrams I extracted from this blog, Revit Pure, that just shows um, the various properties of the, um, the top rail, the intermediate rail, and the handrail. As you can see, um, the top rails, you can assign balusters to top rails, you can't assign balusters to handrails, um, you can assign balusters, I mean, uh, host balusters to intermediate rails. Custom profiles is allowed for all three. The, uh, you can create join conditions, special join conditions for the top rail and the handrail, but not the intermediate rails. You can add supports to handrails. You can see you can add hand clearances to top rails and handrails, transitions, uh, which is a corner joins um, on staircases. You can make special conditions for the top rail and the handrail. And you can add terminations to top rails and handrails, but not to intermediate rails. You can add an extension to top rail and handrail and a custom path to top rail and handrail. So I think there's a very good diagram. They just so you know the limitations of all those three types of rails, and 
um, you, as you can see, the intermediate rails are very limited. And I think um, the when we make the family, it should come pretty clear why. All right. Then the last slide here is just you know mentions that the balusters are the vertical members. And you can see this is a baluster we that has been made for this lesson. Um, so it's a 3D object. You can customize as much as you want. Um, as you can see, I've made some slots here where the rails will pass through. And I also made some holes and a base plate where it can be fixed into the ground and a cut out for the rail that's the top rail that's going to go through it. Okay. And I'm just going to show you this Revit pure blog as well where I got those diagrams I'll put the link in the bottom of the of the video um, but it's a pretty good I think blog in general to just read up on things um, yeah so just goes pretty in depth into the into the parameters and all the properties of uh, railings I'm just going to scroll through this very quickly. So these are the diagrams I just showed. But all uh, most of these points um, will be clear in the tutorial. So, um, but you know, if you wanted to come for some extra reading, you can just come to this page. I think this is a very good summary of all the components of a rail. Okay. Um, yeah, that's the end. And I'll just um, go over to the Revit project. So <coughs> first off, we will make this rail, this baluster. Um, this is the first component of the railing. The, the railing we're going to make has another baluster, but we for sake of time, we'll just make one. I think it should be pretty clear enough after this. We're going to make a parametric, you know, so I'm adding more. I'm, so I'm just giving you a little recap on the um, making of parametric objects as well. Um, and we will also make this which is the support for the handrail. You know, I think it's um, just as a way of showing you how to constrain um, circular objects. Um, I think it's just a good thing to know. And in the Revit project, this is the rail we will be making. When we put everything together, this is what we'll end up having. As you can see, all those components I spoke about, that baluster I just showed you is this, and it's also the one in the middle. So in this case, th these are the end posts here, end posts, and here, over here is the baluster. But they're all the same family. Just, just need to understand that they are in the railing system. They are seen as um, separate objects. Then you've got the top rail over here, You've got the intermediate rail, and you've got this handrail over here. All right. Um, what else do I want to? I think that's pretty clear. Um, so we will then start off making the baluster. Okay. Okay, so to start with the baluster, you need to go to File. new family and you look for metric baluster so just to note there is also a baluster panel over here and there's a baluster post but you can use a baluster metric baluster and as also as a post. Um, and also the baluster panel is in cases, instances where you have 
um, let's say you have a glazed balustrade and you need um, you know you need larger panels that that are not just thin baluster components as I've shown so you can go that route as well but for this lesson we will just be going with the metric baluster um, what we learn here is pretty applicable to the baluster panel it's just the baluster panel is just obviously wider okay so let's go into that okay so when you come into the template you would notice these earthen planes over here so these lines that you can see this reference plane is the top of the rail and this the one at the bottom is the bottom of the rail and these cut angles are basically referencing the cut angle the angle the top and bottom angle of the staircase right so if you had a rail on the staircase this would essentially be I mean this would be the top of the baluster and and this would be the bottom of the baluster on the staircase so that just lets it um, so if you wanted to reference the angle of that staircase you can host a family on these rails so that's just uh, that is why these are important but for for this lesson we're just going to be making um, we're not going to be doing anything um, particularly complex on those on those reference planes just good it's just good to know what they're for okay and the, this baluster height component here is a, an instance parameter that will be controlled when we um, host the baluster in the railing system so you do not need to worry too much about how tall it is over here you can make it 500 but just know that once you host these balusters on the rails in the railing system it will change in its height okay so firstly to start off i'll go to the reference level then i'll start putting in the parameters that are needed okay so to start off I'm going to go to reference plane create reference plane use the pick tool so what I want to define here is the the thickness of the baluster so the baluster I'm working with is about five mil thick so I'm going to offset by 2.5 2.5 2 2.5 okay then the depth is about 30 mils so I'll use 15 and 15 so another thing to note is the as you can see the direction I'm putting the thickness it's towards the left view so this is the left view here this is the right this is the front and this is the back view so as you can see the left view which is which is referencing the side of the staircase right needs to have the thinness of the baluster except your baluster is fat towards the I mean the angle of the staircase I hope that's clear so the, the baluster is going to be facing this direction so this direction over here so I'm making the thin face of it face that direction so uh, that's important so you, you don't want to model it incorrectly and have to rotate this afterwards or I mean but if you did make it parametric it should that should give you the flexibility um, so that's important to understand that so and then I will create parameters for this dimension using annotate align dimension 
create this dimension here. Just going to change the scale so we can see the dimension more clearly. Then create another dimension over here. Then create this equal. I'm going to constrain it, make sure it grows out from the center. And now I'm going to give this a parameter. Okay, I call this baluster underscore depth. So I'm just going to make these family parameters. Um, at the moment, I mean, if I'm correct about this, you can't really schedule these um you can't really schedule the balusters independently so the if, if you made it a shared parameter it doesn't really do much i mean you can make a shared parameter um, but it's not really go it's going to serve any purpose so just leave these as family parameters and remember we can add a tooltip over here say the for instance, the depth of the balustrade, of the baluster, I mean. Okay, um, but for the for sake of time, I'm, I will not be doing that the whole lesson. Okay, just to note, we can do that as well. Um, so baluster underscore depth, <coughs> excuse me. And then we're gonna add a parameter here for the width wait for the dialog to show up baluster underscore width okay now that's done so we have thickness of um, the dimensions of the baluster um, vertical member itself so now remember the one I showed over here as a base plate okay so we'll just go back to that reference level <coughs> going to go back to reference plane offset then we'll go so the the plate is about 50 mils deep as I have it I'm just gonna offset by 25 on either side and ch and it's a uh, 100 mils wide, so I'm going to use the 50 offset. Okay. We now use the dimension tool, shortcut DI, equal dimension as well again. Go. Done. Okay. Now we give these parameters. Click on that dimension, go to that icon, create parameter. We say baluster underscore base plate width. Okay, then the next one, baluster underscore base plate depth. Okay, you notice I always make the depth basically vertical and the width horizontal. Just good practice in general, I think. So you know you're clear on what's the width, what's the depth. Okay, so now we've got those, um, we've got those um, parameters set up for the vertical member and the base plate. So let's um, go to the front elevation. Oh no, actually the left elevation. Let's just add the parameters in the left and the 
um, plan as much as possible okay so then I'm just gonna go excuse me so then I'm just going to go back to the reference plane I'm going to offset so I'll make that about five mil I'm just so give me a second okay so give that dimension so we go <coughs> add a parameter to that so this is this will be for the balusters base plate thickness baluster underscore base plate thickness okay and now we can create some we can create some basic extrusions okay so I'm just gonna go back to the plan on or actually so let's go back to the reference level create extrusion so just know we're still going to modify this but just so we have the basic extrusion there before we add more complexity and um, we still need to make the holes in as well okay so remember to always lock to the reference planes and then I'm just going to create a material so it's baluster underscore material okay so just make it the same material I mean you can make separate parameter for the base plate if you wanted um, I'm just gonna make them both the same okay you lock there click on that reference plane and you lock that extrusion okay so now we've got the base plate and we're going to go back into the reference level we create an extrusion for the vertical member itself add the material and we use the pick lines over here create pick and lock pick and lock pick lock pick lock then trim with the trim tool tr okay and tick okay and we go back to the left view over here just align it to the reference plane vertically and you want to go over here and you lock it as well and let's just look at what we've got in the 3D view. See, so I mean, it, you can see it's we've got a basic outline of it. Um, the one we're trying to make has got you know some complexity. It's got a cut over there, and it's got a uh, two slots in here, and it's got those holes. So that those need a few more reference planes, and we're going to add them. Um, we're going to add them now. So firstly, let's go and add the holes into the base plate and also add those rounded corners in the base plate. Okay, but to do that, as I mentioned, we need more reference planes. So let us take a look. So we go back to the reference plane. We go offset. 
So I'm going to give that offset. Uh, let's say make that five mil. Okay, <clears throat> five mil, five mil, five mil, five mil. Then I'm just gonna make the holes themselves about five mil. So I'm gonna offset 2.5. The holes will be 2.5 um, mil diameter. So I'm just gonna offset 2.5. As you can see now, we're getting quite a lot of lines. And this is why I wanted us to draw the first geometry so it doesn't get too confusing. Then I'm gonna create a dimension here. And dimension here. So these are the for the offset of the holes from the side of the base plate. All right. Then I'm going to select those parameters. And those dimensions and go back over here. We say baluster underscore hole side. I mean hole base plate. We say base plate offset. Uh, you can come up with a better name than that, but yeah get the point then now we can create extrusions I mean we can modify the the base plate I know we actually can't so we still need to add more dimensions so I'm just gonna add those at the bottom here remember we need to make these equal equal so the holes are constrained <coughs> at this center and then I'll add a dimension over there and over there <coughs> excuse me and over there and over here and select all five of those I'm mean all four of those and we go make a new parameter baluster underscore base plate hole diameter okay so I mean remember it's very good very good practice to flex your parameters so make sure they are behaving the way you want them to you can see that is you know this those are behaving as I intend if I make this 50 everything is changing as I as I want cool so we've got quite a lot of you know parameters and reference planes here but we tr we've tried to I've tried to show it in a logical you know in a step-by-step -step process so I think it should be clear enough but let us now e edit that extrusion so I'm going to create a circle right center there click on the center now those are our circles so select all those circles very important step if you do not do this the circles will be ice will be um, don't move when you change the parameters of the base plate now click the reference plane you lock it there click on reference plane you lock it to the center click reference plane lock to center click reference plane you lock it as well so you do this for all four of them yeah. 
the lock. All right. So now the reference, the holes are locked, right? And we can then add dimensions to these. But before that, let us add some round ed corners. So to add the rounded corners, we're going to use a fillet arc. And I'm just going to make that radius about 10 mils. That's quite big, so I'm going to change it parametrically. Then now we can add dimensions, parameters to those corners. So just click on them and click on that dimension, click that dimension, we click on that dimension as well. Okay, so now we're gonna, gonna pick those dimensions and go to the create parameter. See? Baluster underscore base plate fillet radius. Okay, so now we've got the that radius over there. So I'm just going to reduce it, make it about five moles. And so do you see those change? Not very clear because these are in the way, but um, you see they did change with that uh, parameter. So now we're going to click on the circles. Click on the circles, give them dimensions as well. And click on all those dimensions and we say baluster remember this is the radius underscore base plate whole radius Okay, I remember in the family types dialog, we need to make we need to make this whole radius half of the diameter. So we're going to take this diameter parameter over here. I'm going to copy it, Control C and go in here and paste it and use the divide by 2. So now if I change the whole diameter to 10, that changes to 5. So I'm just going to leave that as 5 more. And then we say, OK. Um, all right. That is finished. Then we say, OK. And if we look in 3D, now it's looking more like we're, we're, what we're going for. Okay, so now the top, we need a hole over here. Remember? Um, if we look here, and this is done for a very specific reason, and I'll explain why. Let us go to the front elevation. Okay, I'm sorry, give me a second. Okay. Um, so when you, um, let me just go to the section that I've made for the railing. So as you can see here, this is the baluster, this vertical one here. When you bring a uh, baluster family into the project environment, the base, this, the top line 
which is here, this top line snaps to the underside of the of the top rail. And so if that underside, if you made the cut out over here, there will be a funny gap between the baluster between the baluster and the top rail. So you need to take that cut above this line. So when it snaps to the bottom of the top rail, it meets nicely, it meets neatly. Okay, we will just add that. Okay, so, so let us just go and make a new parameter, reference plane pick 15 mils offset that's what the top rail diameter I mean radius is going to be and I'll just say dimension Here we go baluster underscore top rail radius okay let's change the scale over here so it's a little clearer okay so now the this is the top of the baluster and now this is the center of the top rail okay so what we need to do is pull this up to that line, remove constraints, and we lock it to that center. The next thing now is to create a void extrusion and it's asking for the work plane. So it's going to be the center front back because this is the front elevation. And we go to the circle over here, draw a circle right and then lock that circle very important or else this will not move as intended okay then create a dimension assign that parameter we've created the top rail radius to that void extrusion okay and we create okay go okay and we go to the either the left or the plan view to constrain this void. I'll just drag it until it snaps to the reference plane. Lock it and drag that line as well and lock it. Okay, so now if we look in 3D, we've got a cut. And if we go back to the front view, if I change that top row radius, let's say to 50, as you can see what's happening, that cut is changing. So even if we had a top rail, you can see that outline, had a top rail that is 50 or whatever, it changes to whatever parameter, we can still use the same baluster, which is, I think, pretty, pretty cool. Okay. And it will meet neatly as well. You can see that over there. That is what it's intended. So now we need to add those slots. So these are the last parameters. Um, so to do that, we need to add more reference planes in the left view. Okay. So go RP offset. I'm going to say 100. then five mil for that's how thick the rails will be and from the top which is the underside of the the top rail we'll give it a hundred mil offset as well I'm trying to stick within the regulation which is you know hundred mil gaps between the the rails um, then five mil as well. OK, 
Okay, so now we add more dimensions for more parameters and another one over here. Then from the base, we go over there and dimension there. So I'm just going to make these the same depth as, as the baluster because in the design of the railing, I just want all of them to be the same thickness. So you can add a special, if the rails, um, if those intermediate rails would be uh, different thickness, you can change that to be a d different parameter. So I'm just going to say baluster depth, look for that parameter. Mm, there we go. And over here, I'll add a new parameter. If it's baluster underscore bottom rail offset. Yeah. Offset. Okay. Then the next thing over here is baluster underscore top rail offset. Okay, so this is pretty much done. We just need to create the slots. Um, there's a one last parameter. As you can see in this section of the ballast of the of the railing, these balusters here are offset, and these rails are offset, so they cut. So it allows the railing, I mean the baluster, to go past. Um, so it's not cut by them. So that's just a special detail, just to add some more complexity to it. And I'm just going to go back to the reference level and I'm going to create uh, an offset. I'm going to call it, just create a reference plane. Okay. Offset. You make that 10 mil. Um, let me just see what I called this here. Okay, so I'm just going to dimension that. Let's say baluster underscore rail side offset. Okay. And now we'll go to the front elevation. So we know the rail side offset is this line. And we create two new void extrusions. Create void extrusion, center front back over here for the work plane. And now we pick Make sure you pick the reference plane. You lock there. You lock. And I'm going to use the split. This um, SL, which is that. And I split these lines. And then I trim TR. Trim the lines. And then I'll go to the reference level and just lock it to the reference plane. Lock. And now, if you compare both of them, now you can see we're pretty much done. This is the one we just made.
great. And now the last thing to do is to save, file, save as family. I'm just going to save on my desktop. Um, the families and I think I'll just overwrite this one or actually just save it outside and remember just reduce the backups to one and I like having the 3d view so you can see in a preview before you actually open the family what it looks like um, it's a neat way to present to your families and let's say okay and then I'll just save all right so that is the baluster so we can close this now I've already preloaded the baluster into the project so we don't have to do that again uh, I'll just close this and I'll close the previous one that I was showing okay so now for this support it's a pretty simple um, component if we look here the supports are these objects here that will carry the handrail okay we can also model the termination but it's a simple one and pretty e straightforward um, and to save time we'll just use the one I've created already okay so let's just go and make a as quickly as possible make a support um, so to create a support we need to go same process file new family then go supports we go look for a railing support okay so in the support family you've got these three reference planes so over here is the center front bracket and this is the center line and this parameter here is this um, reference plane here is the hand clearance okay so we will see what that is um, shortly. Okay, so just give me a second. Okay, so let's start adding, quickly adding some reference planes to constrain the support. Okay, so firstly, we need to add the depth of the support offset the support these supports are about 15 mils so I'm going to offset by 7.5 in plan okay and then the depth of the support will be the depth of the of the baluster so that those will be 2.5 mil offsets so I'm just going to constrain those like we've done previously Great dimensions. So you've got the dimensions are not visible in the view at the moment. So I'm just going to show them. We'll just constrain those dimensions. Okay. And now we add a parameter. Support underscore depth. okay all right then now so now that's that's done and now we need to add one for the so this is actually the depth that was incorrect um, this is a s the thickness so I'm just going to chain that okay support 
one is called thickness and this will be the depth so give it a new parameter over here support underscore depth so I'm just gonna make that 15 all right so then we go to the front so at the left elevation I can see here this is the hand clearance dimension parameter over here so the hand clearance is basically I mean it's self-explanatory so if you have a support you want some a gap for the hand a person's hand to go through right so if we look in this 3d mm -hmm, the the hand clearance if we change I see that parameter over there allows the support to move from this end of the baluster outwards okay and so the support automatically snaps to the center of the handrail so you will not need to worry too much about that but if you did on pin it you can change that I'm kind of jumping the gun here and you can also actually drag supports away well I'm, I'm, I'm kind of jumping the gun but uh, yeah just to make that a little clear okay so we go back to that left view I'm just gonna make this um, let me just make it for 1 is to 5 all right so then we'll create some more reference planes RP offset um, that's 7.5 7.5 7 offset there create some more dimensions then we add a parameter say support underscore depth oh, sorry we've already made that parameter so all we have to do is select it all right so now we need the bend radius of the support remember the support we have has a curve like that we also want to add that so we go back to the left then we say 30 offset offset dimension dimension here and add another parameter support underscore bend radius okay <coughs> I'm gonna use a reference plane again and I'm gonna create another parameter 15 and this is for the top for the handrail to meet neatly at the support okay and we go support underscore hand rail radius alright and then oh, I think that is all we need for this okay so I think we've got all the parameters great so I'm just gonna make this a little smaller over there so now we need to create a sweep so our sweep needs to run from the center of the top rail I mean of the handrail down 
curve and down here. So let's see how that's created. So we create a sweep. I'm going to pick and select sketch path. Well, firstly, I want to create the bend. Do that with an arc tool. With the arc tool, I'm going to draw like that. Select that arc. Make the center mark visible. Use the align tool. Lock it there. And lock it there as well. Okay, very important step. All right, then you use the pick lines. You lock it here. And you lock it there. And now we trim. And trim. Okay, and we're going to use a split tool to just split these lines. Select them, delete, select, delete. And use the line tool again. Click that top reference plane. You lock it. Reference plane. When that blue line, blue end shows, click and lock. Now we've got a constrained sweep line. Okay. So the last thing, make sure this line here. So this this is the plane on which we're going to draw the profile. So if, if the plane is over here, it means we have to draw it in a, an elevation view, but I want to be able to draw it in the plan view. Okay. All right. And I'll click on the curve and just add that bend radius to it. Support bend radius. Okay. And then we say, okay. And you go to your reference level. And now we're going to create the support profile over here. So then create, sorry, select profile, edit profile, use the pick lines, so pick your lines, pick your line over here. Okay, then we trim. All right, and the material, let's choose the default material over there. And this is, yeah, that now our sweep is done. And just click and look for a 3D view. And you can see that is what we just made. Very important to just flex it again. So change the hand clearance, let's say, to about 200 just to make sure it works. And the bend radius we can change to, let's say 60. And then just to test it out, you see, and it works. And just, um, I'm gonna take it back to what it was. And now let's not forget to add that void. And with the last one has a cutout, yeah, that's where the handrail is going to sit. So it will meet nicely against the handrail. Okay, so go back to that left view, create void extrusion, circle, there, click on the circle, center mark, so we can lock it, important step. Okay, and then dimension, and that will be the Handrail radius. Okay. And we say okay. And we go back to our reference level. We lock it here. And we lock that. We look in 3D. I see that is finished. Great, so now we've got the two families we were going to model. Took a while, um, yeah, to show you that um, it's, yeah, it does take quite a while to make all these components. Uh, so now we can actually put them in uh, in a railing in the, in the project. So I'll just save this. Save as, family, let's go again, support, well, I'll save it out here, 
Black Ops 3 and 3D view. Again, just make sure this 3D is the preview. And yeah, and just save. But as I mentioned, I've preloaded all the components so we don't have to load them again. And just close this. And close. Okay, so we're going to, as I mentioned, um, if we go back to 3D, put it together to make this. So for this, I'm just going to use one of the generic ones um, that's contained in the template and modify it. Okay. And as you can see in this elevation, if I just hide this here, it's good practice to draw what you intend before you actually implement it. Just so you do not get confused because when you start placing the components, the way you place them, the pattern of, um, especially for the balustrade is important. So you can see if you're achieving what you intended, right? So very important. So this process won't take that long. You know, we've already made all the components um, so it should go pretty quickly. So I'm just going to, yeah, so I'm just going to modify the, one of the ones in the template. Um, so I'm just going to call it, so let me just duplicate this name. I'll just copy this name over here. Okay. So I'm just going to duplicate this important. So this is a way to create a new rail. You duplicate. I'm just going to paste that name. I'll add a two to the end. So we're going to use this compare. We're going to use the compare the new one and the previous one. So we know we've gotten what we want. Okay. Now we need to start adding the components. All right, so just give me a second. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to add the rails. So modify the rails um, so they conform to these lines. Okay, so we go edit type. So the important parts of this window, this dialog, I'm just gonna hide the ones that are not important for us. Right there. So these four, one, two, three, four. So this here talks about the railing itself. So You've got the rail structure, and you've also got the baluster placement. Okay. Then you've got the top rail. You've got the handrail, so you can have two handrails in a um, in a railing, but we're just going to use one in this case. So for the rail structure, remember the rails are the horizontal members. We're going to add the two rails that you saw. So. I'm just going to call them rail one and rail two. Okay. And the offsets they have are two, eight, seventy and one, oh, five. Okay. And they also have, these are the horizontal offsets. They also have horizontal offsets of 10 and 10. And we're going to change the profile over here. So the profile we've preloaded into this project is, um, we're just going to look for that. So I call it a BPAS square rail profile. I'm just going to copy that and paste that. So remember the profiles are 2D objects, 2D, 2D elements. Right? And you can also give them a material. 
Okay, so the real name, the height, this is vertical, and this here is horizontal offsets. This is the type of profile and material. And we say OK. And let's say OK again. And as you can see, this rail here now conforms. So let's just look in 3D. So it's not what we want yet. You can see here, but it's starting to look like it. Yeah. So that rail is that rail, and this rail is this rail. OK. So now let's go back to that elevation. Select the rail again. Now let's add the balusters. So the important thing here is the pattern. Let me describe the pattern. So the pattern we're going to be doing does not include these end posts. So these, so from here, basically from here, to here is the pattern. So we have to place one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, then place a baluster in as a pattern. So if all the balusters were the same, we do not need to interrupt the pattern with this. So if all your balusters were just the same distance, you just need one baluster. But because we have an interruption, this now has to be more um, accurately um, described in the baluster placement. Okay, but um, that should be clear once I once we get it done. So, edit type, baluster placement. Let's just give me a minute. Okay, then. This is just, you can give it a name. Let's call it Steel Baluster 1. Now our baluster type is the BPAS Steel Baluster Type 2. Okay. And just make sure the rail settings are correct. So the base we want for it is rail 2 right and so this is the host so rail 2 will be the host at the at the base and the base offset will be 0 and the the top host will be rail 1 the top offset will be 0 the distance from previous so the distance of this rail from the previous rail will be 100 and its offset horizontal offset will be minus 10 okay then we'll just duplicate this about nine times. Okay, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so now we have all the rails, um, all the balusters we need. Um, then we just say okay. Take a look at our pattern. As you can see, it's not right yet. But that is because we're missing, we're still missing this vertical. So before we add that vertical, let's add a top rail. Okay, so, so just um, let's wait um, for a little bit. Okay, so okay, so our top rail, we just need to say use top rail, and we look for the correct height. So we're going to make that a meter, and we choose the top rail type over here. So this was pre-made, 30 mil top rail. And as you can see here, there's a circular profile that has been assigned. So just make sure you assign that over there. And you can also assign a material to it over there. 
Okay, as you can see now, we have a top rail assigned over here. Okay, so it's important to add the top rail because this center baluster that I'm going to add now is hosted on that top rail. Okay, so let us go back into the baluster pattern. Okay, so then we go edit type, baluster placement, edit. And now we're going to duplicate this and we'll call this two. Okay, and then choose the correct type as type one, then its base will be host. So the host is the level, All right? And its top is the top rail element, and it does not have a horizontal offset. Okay. Now we can also add the corner, the start post the corner post and the end post. So the start post also has to be the same type. Let's copy paste. The corner post also same type, copy paste. End post, same type. The top offset, the top um, host is also top rail element. Just do the same for all three. And the space here indicates the distance of the balusters from the ends. But let's add this later. So you can be clear on that. So as you can see now, if we look in 3D, our pattern looks more like this now. Because we've added the correct spacings. So the, the spacing I was speaking about was for the end post was over here. So as you can see, they do not meet neatly yet. The rail and this ballast, this these end posts. So we need to push this in over here, and we also need to push this in over here. Okay, so then I'll just go back in here, edit type, then to baluster placement and give that a space of 2.5. Alright, then this will be for the corner post, so it meets neatly at the corners, minus 13, and this will be minus 2.5. Okay, and now all should be meeting neatly. You can see, perfect. All right, so now what we need to add are the handrails. Okay, so we're going to select this again. Go to the handrail. So we've top rail, so the handrail type we want. So I'm just going to select the position as um, left. You can say left and right. Left. And the handrail type will choose the 30 mil handrail pre setup. And the important bit here is the real profile. Okay. And as you can see, I'm just going to flip this so it looks the same. Now we've got all that over here. So let's just talk a little quickly about the settings. So let me draw, make one that's much longer so you can see um, what we've made I and mean, if it actually does work in all the conditions um, in all most conditions so let's go to plan view 
I'm just going to go here and I'm going to create this similar. Well, it is on the railing. I'm just going to use this one that we just made. I'll just draw one that's pretty long like that. Let's say OK. Now we're going to look in 3D. As you can see, it looks it works pretty well. Um, the pattern is working. Uh, yeah. And so I'm just going to talk through some special settings um, for the top rail and the hand rail. So the balusters and the intermediate rails are pretty simple, standard. They don't really have any, um, they don't really do any other thing that is special. Um, as you as you remember from the presentation, um, they just, you know, they stop where they stop and start where they start, nothing else. But the top rail allows you to do, and the hand rails allow you to do quite a lot more. So let's just talk about the supports first. So you see these supports, they can actually be selected because the top rail and the hand rail, they're also families in their own right, right? They just get hosted onto the, the railings. So if you unpin this, let's say you didn't want a support here because you know this does not line up nicely enough. You can then just move this to where you want right tab select and you can drag it I in an elevation view you could drag it more accurately and you can also delete it um, excuse me okay so that is on the um, the supports okay so another setting if we go tab select and we go edit type as you can see the support um, family is assigned over here you can say what distance you want the supports to be and you can say if you want them to align with the posts for instance if we look here if, we, if I just say align with posts they just go to the ends I'm just gonna undo that you can say what termination you want. So I just said there's a family called 50 millimeter termination I made. So it just adds it to the ends over there. So if I change this to, let's say, the 80, and I change that to the 80, and I say OK, those get bigger. You see that gets bigger. Um, you can also say what kind of extension style you want. So the extension style basically allows the termination, I mean the handrail or the top rail to be extended to let's say the floor or wall or even a post. So let's just try the floor. So if I say extension, let's say just give it a 50. You see just, um, and you see on this end over here, it came down to the floor. But some weird things start to happen with the supports. So then you can then s tab select, tab select, and you can unpin them and delete them. That is pretty neat that you can do that. You just extend that there. And it, on the other end, you can have a different kind of um, end condition. Um, let's say. So let me over here. Uh, okay, then let's say this one is a wall extension, and we just gave this let's say three hundred. So it allows the handrail to extend and go meet a wall. Let's say you had a wall over here, then you can make it meet that wall, and again the supports. If they're not behaving as they should, you can unpin and delete. Okay, so yeah, and the last thing is 
the you can also give it the rate the end condition so if you wanted the radius to be you know the bend radius at the corner you can give it a fillet and you can also give it a mitre see makes it a corner but I quite like the fillet so I'm gonna leave it as is so these settings are pretty applicable to the handrail itself the only difference with the I mean sorry the top rail the only difference with the top rail is that the extension you can't extend oh you can actually do that oh. they so all the settings are pretty applicable to both of them I, th I thought we couldn't extend the top rail to a wall as well um, yeah so I don't have to repeat that Okay, um, I think this is a good, um, I think it's comprehensive enough. It should give you um, a very uh, a good overview of how to make a railing. Um, they are, I mean, they do look complex, but once you know how the parts fit, you know how to make the families, um, they're quite a joy to work with, and you can make quite beautiful things. And I think I will probably add this one to the template. So yeah, it could be we have a different rail type. Um, thank you. Um, yeah. And good luck. Cheers.